welcome to my craft room. Phone's on so you can hear me. Uh, welcome to my craft room. My name is Julianne Richards and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in Southern Tasmania. Uh, today I'm doing the video for my July Fun Fold and No um, Sentiment Only Stamp um, Class by Mail. These are the three cards you've purchased in your kits um, today. Uh, so we're going to be working through these one by one and I'll show you how to pop them together. Uh, fairly straightforward really, uh, just nice for you guys to see how to put them together and any tips or hints that um, I can give you along the way. Uh, just a couple of things that I will point out before we start and if you uh, want to actually uh, stop the video and come back to give you a chance to, to do these things. Um, this die cut here is from the Artistically Inked um, die set. You probably have all the little um, inserts there in the one that I've given you. So um, if you need to pop all those out, um, probably pause the video and, uh, and come back when you've done that, got rid of all the little inserts there, push them through with your um, with your stylus or whatever. Also, you need to fussy cut the peach and leaves for this card. So in the kit for this card, you'll have um, some, some pieces of designer series paper and those peaches and leaves are actually on there or various different sorts. So you'll have at least a peach and some leaves that you can cut out to decorate that card. Um, if you have the Sweet as a Peach dies and um, stamp set, you might actually want to stamp yourself um, a peach and some leaves straight from the, the, the set rather than using the ones from the design series paper. Um, and, um, you know, that would look lovely as well, depending on how much you love or don't love fussy cutting. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so let's get underway, assuming you've got all those things done um, and you're ready to get started with these cards. So we might start with the, um, the easel card first. Slightly different easel card for me in the fact that it's um, sort of a high, uh, a um, portrait one rather than a, a landscape, no, a landscape run rather than a portrait one. It sort of runs side that way rather than up and down. Um, it's quite pretty. I love this paper. This paper has been used in so many of my classes recently that uh, I'm going through packets of it like you wouldn't believe. Some of the beautiful pale papaya um, ribbon which is new in this new carrot catalogue and as I say the really lovely die cut very very fiddly and very delicate so be careful when you're handling that um, the die cut as well from the artistically inked um, die set anyway so let's get started with that one I'll just pop it there so I can watch it as I go okay so your kit should have all these little bits here's my little flowers there and I've already removed all the little inserts from um, and I'll get all the paper out first and then we can go through what you've actually got. So I've got two sets in this little pick, pick uh, little pack here. So I'll just get out half of everything. Hopefully I'll get it all. So the dies, <clears throat> if you like the little die cuts out of this one, it's from the um, colour and contour does, um, uh, stamp set. Really, really lovely. I think that's about all I need. I'll come back if I don't. Um, yep, so we'll get started with that. <clears throat> so here is the base of our easel. It's um, basically a, a, a five and three quarter by eight inch piece of cardstock that's scored at four inches and two inches, just to give it that sort of Z that you have with your easels. And we have various pieces of cardstock and paper just to decorate that and those and then the, the easel part itself um, here as well. So the colours that I'm using are Blushing Bride, which is the easel. <clears throat> Pale Papaya is the a highlight colour and the designer series paper, as I say, is from the Expressions in Ink, which, um, which I'm absolutely loving at the moment. So let's get this layered up and then I'll be able to see if I've actually got all the bits out of my pack. Good thing for me to actually get these videos done before I send the packs out because I know I pick up the sort of random pack kit and if I haven't missed, if I've missed something out, I'll know that, um, you know, chances are I can get the packs and make them complete before I send them. So you've got this piece of pale papaya and it actually goes on the bottom surface of your easel. So the, the part that's going to sit on the ground on the surface there, the big one. So that's there. So you've got your um, 
sort of Z, the rest of your easel sitting up above it like that. Yep, that's right. Okay, so then you've got the piece of um, designer series paper uh, and that goes on on top of there. Okay, only a very small border around the edge of that bare, you know, an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so then we've got a more narrow piece of pale papaya and a piece of corresponding piece of designer series paper. So that goes on the front facing part of the Z. So there's our Z. You've already decorated this surface. You also want to decorate the, the, the first panel or the last panel. So this is these are the surfaces, the, the third one and the first one. You leave this middle one blank. Now you can choose here whether you show the same surface as the paper, so the same side of the paper as we did in the base, or it might be nice just to, I'm going to flip it over so that you see the, um, the underside just for something a little bit different. The same Daffodil Delight flowers is the same little, see the little waves there you can use. Just making sure I didn't actually put another piece of paper in there. No. No, that's it. Okay, so you, I'm flipping that over, or as I say, you can keep you can keep the same flowers facing up on the original card. I've had the same flowers facing up there. You can see the same flowers surface. Actually, I might. Oh, do I like that? Let's have a look. No, actually, I think I prefer it with the flowers facing up. It's up to you though. If you want a bit of a contrast. So there you've got basically a Z fold card. If it was sitting upright, you've got a Z fold card there with, with the decorations that were pretty standard for a Z fold. Okay, like that. All right, and we'll pop that aside for a second. Now you've got three um, uh, or two die cuts and a panel of pale papaya. I'm just going to get these little bits out. So many little bits and these die cuts. Oi, oi, oi. You have to forgive me if I've left them in yours. I get to the point where it's like, oh, I don't think I can face it anymore. So in the interests of my own sanity, I do tend to leave leave them in. Okay, so you've got a, this is the large die from the um, colour and contour um, die set. So it's a nice large one. You've got the next size down and this is in pale papaya. So I've actually got, designed this card to have that one basically straight onto the um, the large blushing bride one so just make sure it's the same distances left and right up and down and as straight as you can yeah okay so then you need some ribbon and hopefully i've put the ribbon in my own kit that would be bad if i haven't Or maybe I assumed I would come back to it. Yep, I haven't put the ribbon in my own kit. I will check the others, but I'm pretty sure the others have ribbon on there. Anyway, I'll grab the ribbon. Where is it? Oh, where are you? Oh, it's gone. Excuse me, it's gone further away than it should. Oh, there we are. Okay, so you've got a piece of ribbon there. So what I you're going to do, and I'll cut this so it's the right length. So you probably have you'll have enough cut enough ribbon to go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You got this extra piece of pale papaya, which is going to sit on top of the um, the scalloped edge of the pale papaya there. So this is where you're going to put your ribbon around. So what you want to do is measure the ribbon so it's We'll just flip over the edge. So if you have to cut the piece of ribbon I've given you so that it just 
overlaps the edge of that one slightly and then we're going to get some double-sided tape and attach it so that that one goes along and then what we're going to do is what you've got left we'll tie a little bow on this to the left hand side of our of our sentiment box so what we want to do now and apologies I've sort of mucked things around a little bit is hang on, this is the, different to the one I made for my example okay so what we might do first is grab that little piece of ribbon that you've just trimmed to the right size and get your double-sided tape now I suggest you yeah so watch what I'm doing first before you keep going just in case you want to come back and do it slightly different so we'll pop a piece of double-sided tape on the back trimmed my fingernails I have nothing to pick my double-sided tape with There we go and get that ribbon in place so you want it in the bottom quarter the bottom quarter of the piece of cardstock so probably about mm, about three quarters of an inch from the bottom and secure it with the double-sided tape just like that okay so that's what you want there the light's a bit funny in my room today I thought that would help at all no definitely not okay so now we're going to actually attach this extra piece of cardstock to the scalloped rectangle just finishing it off with the glue around the place and pop it in there so try and stay within the dots so that you can still get the pretty dots from the um, from the triangle from the rectangle underneath just like that the reason I've, I've put that on first is because I wanted to capture that ribbon up and under the side under the the edges there okay so that's what you've got now we're going to get our little um, die cut flowers and we're going to pop that you know, leave we want to glue it but we want to glue it in under the ribbon so that it's sort of just there okay so I'll just grab some glue just in some just in spots doesn't have to be a lot because we are going to be securing it also with our sentiment box so just a bit just a bit of glue in the lard you know in the bits where there's a bit more cardstock than others and then slip it under your ribbon and glue it down just be careful of those little fine bits there we are okay there we are that's sweet isn't it my headphones are falling off that's all right so okay so that's it so what we can do now is actually attach it to our um, card base our easel so you bring back in our easel so we're actually just going to glue the largest of the um, scalloped um, rectangles just gluing it to the front facing decorated panel of our card base so when you look at it there you just want glue on that the bottom quarter or bottom third of our decorated rectangle so just along there if you find it easier pop the glue on there first but i um, just popping it on the bottom sort of quarter of the cut of the decorated rectangle bring it put it in place jiggle it till it's same all around Oh, you know what I've done? I've done a boo boo. Oh gosh, sorry. I hope you guys haven't gone too far. Get rid of that glue. You're actually attaching the top quarter to the card base, not the bottom. So I'm actually top doing that. Well, oh, there's just a few different ways you can do 
easel cards and I have got used to doing the other way. So it's the top third you're going to put your glue on. Apologise for that. Hopefully this isn't going to be too sticky now. So it's the top third you put your glue on and you attach that to your card base. Is that right? No, that's not right. It doesn't really matter too much. What have I done? Where's my original? Here's my original. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're doing a slightly different one to the original. There. So we'll leave it at that. So you can do the top third. There we are. I've just done something completely different to my original card. Yes, I have. Anyway, that's all right. We're doing a different sort of easel card today. We're doing this one. So attach the top third of your decorated rectangle to the top panel of your Z. There you go. Okay, so totally valid. If that's what you're actually going to end up with, that there. Okay, so now we're going to have to put, we'll do our sentiment next. I actually quite prefer this sort of um, easel card. It's quite lovely. We're going to do our sentiment. Make sure I got my sentiment boxes out. I don't think I did. So to put our sentiment on, you've got a smaller panel of Blushing Bride and a sentiment box from the Scholar, uh, Colour and Contour dies. What we're going to do is pop the sentiment on the white one and I'm going to use the Colour and Contour stamp set and I'm going to use Thank You for Everything which fits onto this little sentiment box quite nicely. So I'll just grab that out. And some black ink. There we are. I really like the font of that. That's really nice. And we will just check in my original. I don't want to go too far from the from the, um, the original. Okay, so we'll grab some dimensionals. So you will have some dimensionals in your pack and they will be large dimensionals this time or they could be. Depends if I've got a new order of the mini ones being delivered in the meantime. So we just pop some large dimensionals on the back of our sentiment box. So this is the, what the sentiment box that's going to call, also form the easel foot to stop our card from falling forward when it's on display. So pop that on there. And then you mount that up onto the piece of Blushing Bride that's cut just a similar size. And it should just peek out around the edge just so you can see a little tiny hint of Blushing Bride. Then what we're going to do is grab some glue and glue this one in place on the base of our easel to form the foot. So, so you decide how high you want your card to sit and then position that in place as central as you can and as far back as you need it to be. The further back you place it obviously the higher your card will sit and if you want it to fall forward a little bit more you bring it a little bit more forward but there we are I've probably got that probably uh, an eighth of an inch from the front surface of the paper there okay so that's that's that sits up like that okay you've got one more sentiment that you need to do and this one I've given you the smaller scalloped sentiment box here this one here and again you probably need to push your little thingies out should have done that before I started the video fast forward through this bit if you want 
just need something that's like a little a stylus or a pin or I'll use a, an old ceramics tool from, I got from my mum's workshop. Okay, so you just need the holes out of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is stamp that one with another sentiment, so something that complements the, the one you've used below. And my one I've used before is you, thank you for everything. So I thought I will complement that with the you're absolutely amazing also from the colour and contour stamp set. And it fits per, per, pretty much perfectly in this particular little sentiment box. Obviously they were designed to go together of being the dies and the stamp from the same, um, same uh, design. So I'll just centre that up as best I can. It's a bit tricky with the doing videos. You're not quite at the right angle. Normally I'd come in over the top videos. Sometimes you've got to come in from the side. Okay, so again, I'm going to pop that at the front, just to the side so it doesn't cover up too much of your beautiful um, and your beautiful uh, die cut there. I'm going to put some dimensionals on. like that because you're going to um, be trying to um, you're going to try and um, uh, position or to, to trying to lock down that ribbon as well so put the dimensionals um, as hard up against the edges as you possibly can so that they fit around the ribbon so then we're going to bring in those line that up with the ribbon so that it's nice and straight comes out at the right angle and pop that one down there like that again you've got very pretty so grab the rest of the ribbon that I've given you so you should have a, a, a length left from attaching it behind that little rectangle there and what I've done is bring that in under there and tie a little bow you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. You just want to leave it just as a straight piece, no bow, but I quite like a little bow. Let's bring that in and tie it round. That's where I always get stuck. I'm all thumbs sometimes with ribbons. With bows. There we go. Gotcha. There we are. Caught my little die cut there. There we are. So that's really sweet. I quite like that. That ribbon, that colour just really, really appeals. Okay. Uh, you should also have some uh, some champagne rhinestones in your kit. So there should be three for the card. And I'm just going to pop those around as well. Just wherever you like to position your bling. There we are. Okay, I'll we'll keep those for the other one. Okay, so there is our easel card. So we've got used a lot of beautiful panels from lots of um, uh, die cuts from our um, artistically inked or oh, artistically inked and um, or artistic dyes and our colour and contour by dyes plus some of the pretty colours as well from the designer series paper. So there you are. So that's our easel card. Hopefully you like that one. Sorry, a bit of, a bit of confusion there. Crash bang. 
um, so many easel cards below, uh, in the world, you sort of sometimes forget which one you've actually designed. But anyway, that one's quite nice. Okay, so remember, paper on the first panel and the smaller second panel, then attach your decorated rectangle to the top third of the, the, the thinner um, layer, thinner panel, and then your foot stops your card from falling forward like that. Okay, cool. And it flows, closes up like that, obviously. So that's card number one of today's class. So let's do, I'll just have a little bit of a tidy up and we'll head straight to card two. Just get rid of that. That's for our Zoom. I also do a Zoom if anyone's interested. When I do a fun fold class, I actually hold a Zoom session later in the month where um, if you grab the Zoom link and pop along, we can make these cards together. I think it's just a lovely social way <clears throat> of card making and it's been especially great um, during the, the current pandemic with that little bit of social contact. So if you are watching this and you think, wow, well, I'd like to do that with a group, just uh, let me know and I'll send you through the Zoom details um, when 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 they're ready. So, okay, well, for this month or for future months, I do one every month, so it's great. Okay, so let's do our peach one next. I'll grab my kit. So this is a, a book binding fold which is quite cute it's actually a normal size card in the envelope but it's got this um it sort of looks like the the binding of a book or the the, the um, spine of a book there that um is a little highlight and you actually just get this four inch square um opening section here but it's just a little bit different just something to create a bit of interest um, and it, with the colours from the peach, the sweet is a peach paper, it's just really, really lovely. Okay, so let's get our bits out. Okay, so we've got our card base and we've got our square panel for inside. So that's where you write your message inside. And you've got, I'm going to have to die cut that out, a couple of peaches that you need to die cut, uh, fussy cut out, some ribbon I'll get out in a minute. Now this, we've got some um, uh, peach uh, pear, pear pizzazz is the contrasting colour here and some pieces of designer series paper from this sweet as a peach. Should be another little piece there. And another piece of designer series paper, hopefully. If I'm doing my job properly. There it is. There it is there. Keep that in there. Some ribbon. And a embossed, little piece of embossed as well, which I'll go through in a second. I'll just pop that back. So once I've got it all out, I'll tell you what you've got. <clears throat> I've got two sets of cards in here. That's why it's a little bit of a fish through to get the right bits out. Okay, so you've got a card base, which is actually cut sort of long ways rather than short ways. <clears throat> Sorry about the crab in my throat. Um, okay, so it's um, 11 centimetres long by four, no, 11 inches long by four inches wide. It's scored at five and a half but it's also scored at four as well. So that's where you get your, this is your little book binding part here, which is an inch and a half apart. So 11, centimetre, 11 inches, five and a half inches, and at four inches, and that gives you your card. So it's gonna be that way, okay? So then you've got a piece of whisper white, uh, basic white, which just will sit in there. We'll do that last and various things for decorating. I know I've missed a piece out. The uh, card base itself is Calypso Coral cardstock and the contrasting colour is Pear Pizzazz, both lifted pretty much exactly from the, the designer series paper. Okay, so decorate this one. Bring in your square of uh, Pear Pizzazz and your square of designer series paper and your little skinny piece of pear pizzazz 
and your little skinny piece of designer series paper. So the skinny piece of designer series paper or the piece of square piece of designer series paper should just sit perfectly inside the pear pizzazz. And I can see that I've actually made that too long. Bear with me. It's a good thing I did this. I really actually, it's part of me checking myself as well, just to make sure that I've measured everything correctly. Because once you make so many kits, you tend to find yourself um, sort of, you stop seeing, you look at it so much, you stop seeing what it actually is. So that should be, what's that? Three and five eighths. Yeah, I've left that a little bit long. Just check that in your own kit. It could be that I've left it a little bit long. I've got my measurements slightly wrong. So it could be that you need to trim a little bit off that. But that piece of cardstock should fit perfectly with a very small border, and it does now, um, into that. Um, papers as one and we'll just attach that apologies if you have to get your trimmer out and trim that down I think I did about 20 kits so there's probably about 20 of you out there cursing me because you've had to cut a little piece off your designer series paper which I apologize for okay so we've got that then we bring this one in and it sits on the left hand side or right hand side of the card base so the you might not be able to see the, the the what's the word the score there so it sits on the right hand side of the score and that's a bigger border so you've got um, probably an eight, uh, eighth of an inch or it's a quarter of an inch smaller so you've got an eighth of an inch all the way around there like that so if I bend that you'll see that's our bend there for our book binding that's decorated there. So you've got this gap here and that's where we're going to put this little skinny one. So you can leave the same side facing up. This is the same paper as that or you can flip it over for a little bit of contrast. So I'm actually going to show the other side just to, <coughs> excuse me, um, just to sort of create a little bit of difference, a little bit of contrast between the two parts of the card so we've got those pretty little peaches I think some of you may have different paper and you've got sort of a more of a, a dotty one on that side but anyway so I quite like both of them I love this paper I try to get as much use of it as I possibly can so we've got that there okay so now you want to grab out your ribbon. Grab out the ribbon from your pack. Here we go. And this is the polka dot ribbon. This is actually retired, this ribbon, which is a very, it's a shame in my mind. It's very, very lovely. And because I had so much of it, I've decided to share it with you guys in this kit. So what you want to do is position it on the under the but that we're going to call this part the spine so this is the spine of our book so position your ribbon under the spine of your book bring it around and just tie it in either a bow or just a knot i think this um this beautiful polka dot ribbon is just as nice with just a knot so if you've got the dexterity to uh, tie it in a bow go for it but uh, i'm just going to do this one in a little knot there just like that, I might try, trim it off a little bit, it's a bit long. So you've got that there. Okay, so now you've done that, we're actually going to um, uh, glue our, our spine down. So get some glue, pop it in that little inch and a half between the two scores. Um, snail might be a bit good for this as well, given that you've got to secure that ribbon as well. Close it down and just firm it so that that glues. Okay, so then you've basically got, once the glue dries, actually snail might have been a better idea, you've actually got 
that sort of thing. You've got that sort of glued there and that traps your ribbon as well so that doesn't move around. I'm just going to trim the edge off that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Got a dry throat. Need some water. I'm just trimming the edges there just for that little bit of ribbon. Okay. Right. So the next thing we need to do and what I warned you guys to probably do before you came on, I'm just going to fussy cut a peach out of that. It's not necessarily use the same peach that's attached, the same leaves and peach that are sort of attached in the paper. Just pick one from the paper that sort of appeals to you with its shape and just cut that out. Okay, so I've got my peach there. And I quite like these little leaves down here, so I'm going to use those. Okay, just cut that out. I want to use that peach, that other peach on, a, on the next one I do, so I'm going to be careful that I don't wreck that when I'm cutting out. Okay, so I've got a peach and a, some leaves there that I'm going to decorate with. So what I'll do is bring in our smaller panel of pear pizzazz and our little embossed panel which has disappeared. Did I get it out? I'm sure I did. I'll use this other one. So this um, pan, this little embossed panel has been through the floral um, embossing folder, which is new in the current catalogue. I really, really like it. It's quite nice. I've seen actually people, if I don't know if you can see it there in the light, it's got quite distinct little flowers on there. And I have seen people grab their blends or their pencils and colour those in. It looks really, really nice. So I'm going to attach that directly to the pear pizzazz. Just gives a little bit of interest to that background. And then I'm going to glue that into the centre. As much as I hate covering over that beautiful paper, I'm going to glue that to the front of our card. <coughs> okay. Okay, there we are. Then what we're going to do is bring in our sentiment box and I'm not going to bother going through and getting rid of all those little bits. I won't put you through that with this. <coughs> we're going to stamp our sentiment. This time we're going to use the stamp uh, sentiment straight from the actual suite as a peach stamp set. And I'm going to use, what are we going to use? Have a peachy day. that with some black ink and I'm going to put that straight onto that sentiment box. I'm going to slightly cover over the sentiment box with, uh, with our peach when we get there. So keep your sentiment if you can, keep it to the right hand side of your, of that little sentiment box just because we're going to cover over that left-hand side a little bit with our peach. Okay, so what we're going to do is eventually going to have that sentiment box on dimensionals to the right-hand side of the card front. We're going to have that little peach there and our leaves just sort of underneath, just like that. Okay, so what we'll need to probably do is pop the dimensionals on the back of our sentiment box first. Just there, pop some on there. Then 
position it where we want it. We probably need another one there. That's an abundance of dimensionals there, a little bit more than it should. Position that where you would like it on the card and trap your leaf underneath. So we want our leaf sort of sort of there, have our sentiment there, and trap that under a dimensional. And then if you needs a little bit of glue just to finish the job, which I mine does because it hasn't actually trapped it at all, just glue it on there. Okay. Then what we're going to do is bring in our peach just onto there. So you can just do that with glue. There we are. There we are. Have a peachy day. And then there is some um, basic rhinestones in your kit. You should have uh, three for the card. I've got quite a few here giving myself some bonuses uh, and then you just need to grab those and pop them around the place okay And that is our, third, our second card. So, oh, we haven't put the inside panel in. So you've got, as I said, you've got a, this um, square panel here. It should be three and seven eighths inch square. Glue's just about to go. Come on, just finish that. <clears throat> and pop that in there. Then you could pop happy birthday or congratulations or or whatever internal um, sentiment you want in there with your personal message. Okay, so as I said, that's called a book a book binded card or book binding card because you've got that spine happening on the left hand side there. Okay, so that's card number two. We'll pop that one aside as well. Pop it back in the kit so I don't lose anything for when I do the zoom later in the month. Okay, so that's two. I might get some more new glue because that's decided to go and grab a new one. There we are. Okay, and finally, I thought it would be nice to include a masculine card for um, the men in our life. Um, so I've used the suit and tie dies to create this cute and quite fun but sort of casual, sort of I thought more like a polo shirt card. I mean we've seen this this die set used to make suits and tuxedos and fairly formal things like that but I thought with the stripes this looks like you, your dad in his, um, in his polo shirt headed off to golf or something like that. So you could put I've this have made this one a happy birthday card, but you could grab if you've got a Father's Day stamp or something like that. You could use this one quite easily for um, Father's Day, um, whenever that happens to be where you live. Okay, so be really, really careful when you're getting this one out because those little um, buttons are really, really small and they get quite um, static electricity ish, so that they will jump all over the place. Uh, and cut, catch you very much unawares. So just be really, really careful. I should have given you four buttons. So actually, I think I might have given everyone a few more than four just in case you have a button accident. Um, but yeah, you will probably uh, find that they have a bit of a mind of their own when you get them out of the, of the pack. Okay, so you've got four buttons, or at least four buttons, and they are in the new in colour soft succulent. The card base is also in a new in colour. This is in um, evening evergreen, and it's just a normal size card base, uh, uh, eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. You've got a panel of whisper white for inside. Hopefully, this time I've cut them all the right size. Goodness me. And you've got 
a piece of now this is the reverse side so this is like the reverse side of um, something a piece of paper from the um, the poppy no not poppy the um, pansy patch designer series paper so the other side is quite nice but and as I say it gives us those stripes like um, like your dad's favorite or you his favorite golf shirt almost um, you've got I'm going to be careful. You've got a sentiment box, which is a stitched rectangle. You've got a cute little, from the dies, you've got a cute little um, pocket there. You've got a little trim here, a little tiny, tiny stitched, re stitched rectangle, which is the trim for your pocket. And you've got a length of another longer stitch, stitched rectangle, which will form the sort of the button, where the buttons, um, the detail of the button. Okay, so what I have also given you is um, a collar. You should have a couple that look like a collar. Eek. Here we go. And that's also in the um, evening evergreen. So that's the, the collar for your shirt. Um, yeah, and a couple. Uh, actually, if you can see there, I've given you a couple of contrasting trims. So if you decide you don't want to make your collar all evening evergreen you could there should be a little one in there that's in the the other color the contrasting color the soft succulent so you can decide what color you want to make that trim of your jumper of your um, pocket as you can see with my original one i've made the, the trim the um, soft succulent just for a bit of contrast but i'll use the evening evergreen this time so you guys can get a look at how that looks uh, and make your own choice I think that's about all we need. I'm a bit worried about things going everywhere here. Okay, so what I might do is just to do the easy big bits first. I'm going to pop this uh, white box, this white um, layer inside. Just like that. Okay, and then we can start doing the front. So we might just, just assemble these little things first, keep the sentiment box out of the way. So we're gonna assemble our button, our, our pocket. So obviously, as I said, there's the little pocket there with its trim. So you can either decide, as I say, decide whether you want it, the trim to be the same color, the evening evergreen, or whether you'd like it, the contrast of the soft succulent. So just that little highlight bit there, that little seam just sits on the top just to give your button, your um, button, I've got buttons on the brain, give your pocket a little bit of detail, just like that. So it just sits across the top with some glue. Then what we need to do is grab our um, collar. So this is the collar to our shirt. I'm gonna pop a little bit of glue on the back of the collar and position it at the top center of the designer series paper. So just line up the top edges of the collar, sort of like a butterfly almost, with the top of the designer series paper, just like that. So you can't see it from the other side and it's just sitting up there, just like a collar, you know, just like where a collar is basically. Now, to give it a little bit of, make it look a little bit more realistic, I'm actually gonna grab my scissors and this is up to you guys whether you do this but I think it's better if you grab your scissors and just cut out, it's getting really dark in here. It's going to rain. Cut out the little triangle from the neck, what would be the neck of the T-shirt. So if you just chop that out, you end up with a little V cut just in there. Okay, so when it comes to attaching it to our card front, you've got sort of like, it, it doesn't it it uh, it's sort of it's plain so it looks like that's the sort of underneath of the shirt if that makes sense whereas if you had the designer series paper in there you'd sort of see the stripes underneath it wouldn't look quite as realistic there we go if you had a little piece of white card stock you might actually like to um, just glue that up under there as well so it'd look like there's actually a sort of a different color something underneath a white t-shirt or something underneath but anyway, I quite like it just with the V cut out there and seeing the green come through. Okay, so what you need to do now is this little piece of long stitched rectangle. This is gonna form the part of the shirt where the buttons 
button up, so to speak. I don't think, I think it's got an actual word. Somebody will tell me, a seamstress or tailor or something, will tell me that, that what that actually is. So we're going to pop some glue on the back of that and just glue it up under the edge. Um, pick the end, pick which end you want and glue it from the top up under the collar so it looks like it's sort of coming out from underneath so it'll slip under between the cardstock and your collar and just glue it down straighten it so it looks like it's traveling straight down just like that okay if I can bring that close and get it to to um, to focus you'll see that the end of the the end of the little um, rectangle is sort of just snugly placed up under the two sides of the collar and coming down like that. Okay, so now you want to bring in your buttons and just space them sort of same sort of distance all the way down. You can use the four that I've given you. I think I've given you some spares. You could use those as well. Just a little bit of glue and bring your buttons into place. So if you wanted to use extra buttons, I think you've got extras there, but I think four is probably enough in mine anyway. Okay. So there you are. You've got our shirt pretty much coming together, haven't we? So I might glue, we might glue that on now onto our card front. So just pop some glue around the edges, just around that little scoopy neckline there that we've got just there and bring that in and put it onto our card front. Okay. I've got a button touched to my finger. Must have been one of the spare ones. Okay, so there, it was coming together nicely. Now we can bring in our... It's got a little bit of extra card stock there. Bring in our pocket. So I'm going to put the pocket onto dimensionals as well just to make it sit out a little bit actually I don't oh, no, it's all right. just position that sort of off to the side off to the right hand side of your um, buttons line it up with the good thing with the um, good thing with the stripes you can line it up with the stripes and sit there like that okay okay so i'm going to bring in my sentiment box now you mean you might find that you that's all you want you just leave it as that i think it's quite cute um probably didn't wouldn't need much else on there but because you've got your sentiment box there i'll use a happy birthday to you as i say it'd be perfect for a father's day something like that whatever you've got to hand it's a good thing with my fun fold classes you can basically use whatever sentiments you like you've got some favorite ones that you use all the time go for it it's your card you can put what you want or change it how you want so I'm going to use a happy birthday to you it's, this one's a little bit tight and it just fits on so I have to be pretty careful to get it central not exactly straight hey but hey that's the joy of handmade. If it was perfect, it wouldn't be handmade. Well, not by me anyway. Okay, so just some more dimensionals or some foam squares, whatever you're using. And pop that on. Now this doesn't have any bling or anything on the front. I think it was just nice plain. Um, but if you've got some bling that you'd like to add, go for it. Again, line it up with the stripes. And there we go. Okay, so that's our polo shirt, casual shirt card for um, Father's Day or birthday, whatever you like. 
that's really sweet. Obviously, you could change the paper. You could turn that into a, 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 a sort of a more floral design or a, um, you know, just plainer or, or more elaborate, whichever way you want to go, whatever suits your the recipient. Okay, so that's card number three of the um, of my um, card class for this month, or my fun fold card class for this month. Um, I hope you like that one. I hope you like all three, to be honest. Um, if you like any of the products that you've tried with this class, please let me know if you'd like to be to purchase them. They're all current products, except for that polka dot ribbon. Um, they're all current products um, available in the current catalogue. So if you'd like to purchase those or get any other information, please reach out. Um, if anything doesn't make sense or doesn't work properly or is missing, please let me know. Obviously, as I said, I made 20 odd kits of these cards. They sort of tended to merge into one in the end. So please, uh, um, if there isn't a problem with your kit, reach out and let me um, make it right for you. Um, anyway, I hope you like that one. I hope you will come back and do future classes. Um, just uh, like my Facebook page um, and you can follow along when I have new classes released as I do a fun fold class every month and I do a product based class as well. Um, so if you, you know, you can do, um, you know, as casually or as um, uh, formally as you want if you wanted to, to purchase those. Anyway, thanks very much and um, I will see you all hopefully next month.